Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris. Thank you for watching my video. Alright guys, there is something I want to read. It's a little long, but I think this is something that needs to be heard from the average person who doesn't realize um, that if you don't research history, you're bound to repeat it. And you're going to hear things in a story that I'm about to read that is going to shock a lot of people who have never heard this stuff before. So I would highly recommend watching this video with somebody that is one of those people that doesn't believe bad things are happening or bad things can continue to happen. I'm going to try and read as much as I can because I only have 15 minutes, so bear with me. And I will post a link, so if you'd rather hear from the source, you can do that. So I'm going to read an exact um, quote from a woman who survived the times during Hitler's time. Um, here's her story. All right, this is... This took place December 22, 2012. What I'm about to tell you is something you've never heard or read in history books. She likes to tell audiences. I am a witness to history. I cannot tell you that Hitler took Austria by tanks and guns. It would distort history. If you remember the plot of The Sound of Music, the Von Trapp family escaped over the Alps rather than submit to the Nazis. Kitty wasn't so lucky. Her family chose to stay in her native Austria. She was ten years old, but bright and aware, and she was watching. We elected him by a landslide, 98% of the vote, she recalls. She wasn't old enough to vote in 1938, approaching her 11th birthday, but she remembers. Everyone thinks that Hitler just rolled in with his tanks and took Austria by force. Not so. Hitler was welcome to Austria. In 1938, Austria was in a deep depression. Nearly one-third of our workforce was unemployed. We had 25% inflation and 25% bank loan interest rates. Farmers and business people were declaring bankruptcy daily. Young people were going from house to house begging for, for food. Not that they didn't want to work. There simply weren't any jobs. My mother was a, my mother was a Christian woman and believed in helping people in need. Every day we cooked a big kettle of soup and baked bread to feed those poor hungry people, about 30 daily. We looked to our neighbor to the north, Germany, where Hitler had been in power since 1933. She recalls, we had been told that they, they didn't even have unemployment or crime, and they had a high standard of living. Austrian girls welcomed Hitler. Nothing was ever said about persecution of any group, Jewish or otherwise. We were led to believe everyone in Germany was happy. We wanted the same life in Austria. We were promised that a vote for Hitler would mean the end of unemployment and help for other families. Hitler was also, also said that businesses would be assisted and farmers would get their farms back. 98% of the population voted to annex Austria to Germany and Hitler for our ruler. We were overjoyed, remembers Kitty, and for three days we danced in the streets and had candlelight parades. The new government opened up big field kitchens, and everyone was fed. Austrians were saluting. After the election, German officials were appointed, and like a miracle, we suddenly had law and order. Three or four weeks later, everyone was employed. The government made sure that a lot of work was created through the public works service. Hitler decided we should have equal rights for women. Before this, it was a custom that married Austrian women did not work outside the home. An able-bodied husband would be looked down on if he couldn't support his family. Many women in teaching profession were elated that they could retain the jobs they previously had required to give up for marriage. Then we lost religious education for kids, promoting Hitler Youth. Our education was nationalized. I, in I attended a very good public school. The population was predominantly Catholic, so we had religion in our schools. The day we elected Hitler, which was March 13, 1938, I walked into the schoolroom to find the crucifix replaced with uh, Hitler's picture hanging next to a Nazi flag. Our teacher, a very devout woman, stood up and told the class we wouldn't pray or have religion anymore. Instead, we sang Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber alles, and had physical education. Sunday became National Youth Day with compulsory attendance. Parents were not pleased about the sudden change in curriculum. They were told that if they did not send us, they would receive a stiff letter of warning the first time. 
The second time, they would be fined the equivalent of $300 today, and the third time, they would be subject to jail. And then things got worse. The first two hours consisted of political indoctrination. The rest of the day, we had sports. As the time went along, we loved it. Oh, we had so much fun and got our sports equipment for free. We would go home and gleefully tell our parents about the wonderful time we had. My mother was very unhappy, remembers Kitty. When the next term started, she took me out of public school and put me in a convent. I told her she couldn't do that, and she told me that someday when I grow up, I will be grateful. There is a very good curriculum, but hardly any fun. No sports and no political indoctrination. I hated it first, but I felt I could tolerate it. Every once in a while on holidays, I went home. I would go back to my old friends and ask what was going on and what they were doing. A pro-Hitler rally. Their loose lifestyle was very alarming to me. They lived without religion. By that time, unwed mothers were glorified for having a baby for Hitler. It seemed strange to me that our society changed so suddenly. As time went along, I realized what a great deed my mother did, so I wasn't exposed to that kind of humanistic philosophy. In 1939, the war started, and a food bank was established. All food was rationalized, uh, was rationed, and could be purchased using only food stamps. At the same time, a full employment law was passed, which meant if you did not work, you didn't get a ration card. And if you didn't have a card, you starved to death. Women who stayed home to raise family, their families didn't have marketable skills and often had to take jobs more suited for men. Soon after this, the draft was implemented. It was a compulsory, compulsory for young people, male and female, to give one year to the labor corps, remember Kitty. During the day, the girls worked on the farms, and at night they returned to the barracks for military training, just like the boys. They were trained to be anti-aircraft anti gunners and participated in the signal corps. After the labor corps, they were not discharged, but were used in the front lines. <clears throat> when I go back to Austria to visit my family and friends, most of these women were emotional cripples because they were not equipped to handle the horrors of combat. Three months before I turned 18, I was severely injured in an air raid attack. I nearly had a leg amputated, so I was spared having to go to labor corps and to military service. When the mothers had to go out to the workforce, the government immediately established child care centers. You could take your children ages four weeks old to school age and leave them around the clock seven days a week under the total care of the government. The state raised a whole generation of children. There were no motherly women to take care of their children, just people highly trained in child psychology. By this time, no one talked about equal rights. We knew we'd been had. Before Hitler, we had a very good medical care. Many American doctors trained at the University of Vienna. After Hitler, health care was socialized, free for everyone. Doctors were salaried for by the government. The problem was, since it was free, the people were going to the doctor for everything. We had a, the good doctor, when the do, good doctor arrived at his office at 8 a.m., 40 people were already waiting, and at the same time, the hospitals were full. If you needed electric sur elective surgery, you had to wait a year or two for your turn. There was no money for research, and it was poured into socialized medicine. Research at the medical schools literally stopped, so the best doctors left Austria and emigrated to other countries. As for health care, our tax rates went up 80% of our income. Newlyweds immediately received a $1,000 loan from the government to establish a household. We had big programs for families. All day care and education were free. High schools were taken out of, over by the government and college tuition was subsidized. Everyone, everyone was entitled to a free handout, such as food stamps, clothing, and housing. We had another, uh, and we had another agency designed to monitor business. My brother-in-law owned a restaurant that has square tables. Government officials told him he had to replace them with round tables because people might bump themselves on the corners. They said they had to have an additional bathroom facilities. It was just a small dairy business and at the snack bar. He couldn't meet their demands. Soon, he went out of business. If the government owned the large businesses and not many small ones existed, it could be in control. We had consumer protection, too. We were told how to shop and what to buy. Free enterprise, free enterprise was essentially abolished. We had a planning agency specifically designed for farmers. The agents would go to the farms, count the livestock, and tell the farmers what to produce and how to produce it. 
1944, I was a student teacher in the village in the Alps. The villagers were surrounded by mountain passes, which in the winter were closed off with snow, causing the people to be isolated. So many people intermarried, and the offspring was sometimes retarded. When I arrived, I was told that 15 mentally retarded adults, but they were useful and did good manual work. I asked my superior where they were going. She said, to an institution where the state health department would teach them a trade, to teach them to read to write. The families were required to sign papers with a little clause that they could not visit for six months. They were told visits would interfere with the program and might cause homesickness. As the times passed, letters started to dribble back saying that these people died a natural, merciful death. The villagers were not fooled. We suspected that this was happening. Those people left in excellent physical condition and died within six months. We called this euthanasia. Next came the gun registration. People were getting injured by guns. Hitler said that the real way to catch criminals, we still had a few, was by matching serial numbers on guns. Most citizens were law-abiding and dutifully mar marched to the police stations to register their firearms. Not long afterwards, the police said it was best for everyone to turn in their guns. The authorities already knew who had them, so it was futile to not comply voluntarily. No more freedom of speech. Anyone who said anything against the government was taken away. We knew many people who were arrested, not only Jews, but also priests and ministers who spoke up. Totalitarianism didn't come quickly. It took five years, from 1938 to 1943, to realize full dictatorship in Austria. Had it happened overnight, my countrymen would have fought to their last breath. Instead, we had creeping gradualism. Now, our only weapons were broom handles. The whole idea sounds almost unbelievable that the state, little by little, eroded our freedom. This is my eyewitness account. It's true. Those of us who uh, sailed past the Statue of Liberty came to a country of unbelievable freedom and opportunity. America is truly the greatest country in the world. Don't let freedom slip away. After America, there is no place to go. And that was Kitty Weatherman. She was alive for the entire ordeal during the days of the Nazis. Now, if a lot of what you heard doesn't ring a bell to what's going on today, this, should shock, this shouldn't shock you. This is what governments do. They can't do it overnight, because if you do things overnight, people will react and they won't allow it. But if you take a little bit of liberty at a time, and you start socializing things like medicine and health care and education, you can control the people with your indoctrination. Now, I'm not suggesting that our country is going to do the exact same thing Hitler did, but if you notice the patterns, it's definitely going in that direction. So if we sit around and do nothing and think things are going to be different, we may wake up one day to be in a position that she was in at one time. And like she said, you know, once America goes, there's not many other places to go. So I hope people will really start thinking about the fact that should we not do anything, we shouldn't think, I'm just one person, I have no say. Well, if every person decided to do something, we could change the world. So let's learn from our history and change our future. This is about to become 2013. We can change the world if we all decide to put in the effort. So I hope people will share this. I hope people will make their own videos on it. I hope people will talk about it. Maybe it can actually wake more and more people to what possibility lies in our future. If we do nothing, we know where it's headed. If we can stop it, then we do have a future. So I guess that's up to us. So to everybody out there, thank you for watching. Have a happy and safe New Year. And um, please pass this along. Peace.